Hi, welcome to the fifth episode of my podcast, Books from Abhinav. I am Abhinav Hansaraman, your host for this show. In our earlier episodes, we looked at books by Adam Grant, Manu Pillai, Jeffrey Archer, and Michael Lewis. Today, we are looking at Malcolm Gladwell's David and Goliath, Underdogs, Misfits, and the Art of Battling Giants. I have enjoyed reading Malcolm Gladwell's books over the years. Tipping Point, Outliers, and What the Dog Saw are his most popular books. He is well known as the guy who popularized the 10,000 hour rule. The idea is that by doing something for 10,000 hours and learning with each repeated iteration of the task, we can become experts at whatever we choose, be it painting, playing tennis, or becoming an expert at economics. Malcolm also produces The Revisionist History, a popular podcast which looks at our misunderstanding of history and aims to correct it. Check out his TED talk on choice, happiness, and spaghetti sauce to understand the fascinating questions he examines and the fun way in which he approaches such problems. The core argument of the book is this. We assume that being smaller or poorer or less skilled is always a disadvantage. In one-sided fights, we assume that the disadvantaged party is almost always likely to lose. He challenges this assumption, argues why some disadvantages might in fact be desirable, and why Davids should never fight Goliaths the traditional well-established way. If you are to look at the history of all one-sided battles, how often do you think the puny challenger wins? Let us look at all battles in the last 200 years, where the bigger army was at least 10 times the size of the smaller army. How many times do you think the small guy won? The answer is an astounding 30% of times. So for almost 1 in 3 battles, the smaller army at 1 tenth the size actually won these battles. We think of underdog victories as improbable events, often impossible. And that's why the story of David and Goliath has resonated so strongly with us. Gladwell looks at the work of Ivan Aragwintoff, a professor at Brown University. The point is that the weaker party isn't weak after all. Underdogs win all the time. Why then are we so shocked every time a David beats a Goliath? Why do we automatically assume that someone who is smaller or poorer or less skilled is necessarily at a disadvantage, stop quote. The book starts with the story of Vivek Ranadev. Vivek, who lives in the Silicon Valley, coached basketball to his daughter's team. Unlike the competitors, his daughters and her friends were short, puny and bad dribblers. They did not play pickup basketball on the daily. They did not have the talents or skills their competitors had. If they played traditionally, they would lose by a huge margin and quit the sport in all likelihood. Realizing that they had to play the game differently, Vivek came up with a plan. A basketball court is 94 feet long, but teams usually defend only within the three-point circle of their own half. So, teams are defending only 24 feet and concede almost a monstrous 70 feet. And of course, once the opponents had possession, it was hard for his daughter's team to outplay or to outwit them. So, he decided to stop their opponents when they started play, right when they received inbound passes, and tried to restrict them to their own half for more than 10 seconds. If they managed to restrict them, his team could win back possession on a technicality. The moral of this story is not that the team went on to win the tournament. They did lose in the end because referees called their defensive tackles as fouls and they lost. But they won for much longer than they could have in the traditional way. They did outperform stronger teams for much longer and there is a lesson in this for all of us. Similarly, T.E. Lawrence or Lawrence of Arabia commanded an untrained set of Bedouins and won against a structured and trained Turkish army. Having more soldiers and a system was an advantage for the Turks, but that led to immobility and created a major disadvantage in the deserts of Arabia. Lawrence's men, on the other hand, could traverse through the desert and attack from unexpected sides and angles. The larger point that Glad- Gladwell is making is that the smaller guy can win, but uh, the underdogs should fight like David and not go the conventional way. In subsequent chapters, Gladwell makes interesting observations on U-shaped curves and tells us, for example, why having richer parents does not make our lives better with each increasing dollar of parental wealth, how smaller classrooms are not always better, and how some difficulties are desirable, including what we normally think of as a disability. Gladwell's explanation of the principle of legitimacy is also interesting and valuable. Legitimacy is based on three things. First, those who obey authority must feel that they would be heard. 
Second, the law must be predictable. Tomorrow's rules cannot conflict with today's rule. And third, authority must be fair and cannot treat different groups differently. In conclusion, the book makes a credible case on the strength of weak parties, builds an overarching narrative through interesting case studies, and exposes you to new ideas and people. Let us go to the second segment of this episode, Interesting Trivia, the etymology of the word eavesdropping. Originally, eaves meant the part of your house where the roof was jutting over your wall. So if this is the wall of your house and this was the roof, this portion is the eaves. When it rained, water would obviously drop across the roof and form puddles there in the eavesdrop. However, if you wanted to spy on someone and listen to their conversations inside their houses, you would hide in this area as you would be invisible and you could listen clearly. This activity therefore became eavesdropping. I hope you enjoyed this episode of my podcast. For more such book reviews, recommendations and interesting trivia, please do follow me on my blog and my newsletter available in the links below. Thank you and have a nice weekend.